Hi, I'm Randy Wong. I'm a retina specialist located in Fairfax, Virginia, and this is one of my very first 27 gauge vitrectomies. I'm going to perform this vitrectomy to remove vitreous floaters, otherwise known as FOV, and to remove an epiretinal membrane. So I'm doing one operation to achieve two goals. As you may notice, the trocars, or those pink hubs, are actually pink versus with 25 gauge videos or 25 gauge vitrectomy systems, the trocars are blue. So it's an easy way to tell which is which. There's a slight difference with 27 gauge trocars in that they have one-way valves. That is, they don't let any fluid out of the eye. What I'm doing here is inserting the infusion cannula, which pumps in saline. And then when the light went off, I wanted to check that the tip of the uh, infusion cannula was safely within the eye. And now you can see the dense vitreous opacification, or the floaters, within the vitreous. And you can also tell that this patient has a PVD. And in just a minute, minute I'm going to show you exactly how dense a Weiss ring is present in this picture. And you can see the shadow, there's the arrows, giving you an outline of the circular area of where the vitreous was actually attached to the optic nerve. And that's called a Weiss ring. In this particular case, the vitreous is very opacified, and that's why I chose it to show you. Most of the opacifications are fairly self-explanatory. You can see them, and as we carefully go around the eye in the next few seconds, we're going to slowly remove the vitreous and thereby remove all the floaters within the vitreous. And this is why it's not really important if floaters are close to the retina because we're actually bringing up the vitreous or pulling the vitreous away from the surface of the retina, not ever getting close to the retina surface to, to injure it. And this is a big difference between vitrectomy and, say, neodymium YAG laser vitreolysis. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the bulk of the vitreous right now, or doing a core vitrectomy. And you'll see that I go kind of around the eye. Now there's some subtle differences with 27 gauge vitrectomy compared to 25. The 27 means that the gauge or the thickness of the instruments is actually thinner. So in a way we've gone from thin spaghetti to angel hair. Going from 25 to 27 just means that the thickness of the instruments is slightly thinner. I think the only improvement or advantage to you is that there is less chance of wound leakage because the holes that you make in the eye or the sclerotomies are smaller. The suction rate has got to be increased because the diameter of the tube is smaller. So it's a pure physics problem that if you're going to aspirate or suck things through a smaller hole, you've got to generate more force. But what's really unique about the 27 gauge system is that it operates at 7,500 cuts a minute compared to the 25 gauge system, which right now is only 5,000 cuts a minute. That means it's actually almost impossible for you to pull or for me to pull on the vitreous and thereby exert force on the retina. Huge, huge difference. It means that you cannot really ever pull on the vitreous. So that means I have to move my instruments to follow the vitreous. And that's kind of what I'm doing. It's a subtle difference in technique, but what it translates in, into, um, what, it tran what it means to the patient is highly unlikely that you can create a retinal tear or less likely to create a retinal tear with 27 gauge mainly because you can't be pulling on the retinas, retina. So I'm going here and I'm getting out the last bit of the core uh, vitreous. And in just a few seconds, we're gonna be done with the vitrectomy. And then I'm gonna be instilling some dye to stain the epiretinal membrane. And I'm checking the far periphery because I like to make sure that the vitreous way off to the sides is removed to prevent any incidents of the patient seeing the boundary of where vitreous was removed and where vitreous was remained. I think some people call this frill.
So in just a few seconds, you're going to we're going to be at the end of the vitrectomy, and we're going to kind of go to part two of this operation, where I'm going to prepare to remove the epiretinal membrane. I, right now, I'm removing just the last little fragments of the peripheral vitreous. So we're basically done with the vitrectomy or the FOV. And in a minute, I'm going to start preparation to remove the epiretinal membrane or the macular pucker. If you look closely at the macula, there's a very shiny appearance to it. And that's the epiretinal membrane. That dye I just injected is green. It's called ICG dye or indocyanin green. It has the ability to stain the proteins within this membrane. So I inject it into the vitreous and I know that a lot of it's going to get bound or stain the epiretinal membrane. So I'm removing the excess dye so that's what left allows me to clearly see the epiretinal tissue. That round piece of plastic I just put on top of the eye is an operating contact lens. This allows me in conjunction with the operating microscope to magnify and focus on the retinal surface. So what you're going to see me do now is kind of get everything oriented so that the operating microscope and the con operating contact lens are working together so that I can easily see the surface of the retina because I'm going to get ready to remove the epiretinal membrane. I use some very very tiny 27 gauge forceps and these are actually handmade I'm told to ensure that they work properly. They're handmade and they work, they're in hand inspected so that I know that I can rely on their ability to open and close in a very precise manner. What's very difficult about removing an epiretinal membrane is that you want to remove the tissue that's on the surface of the retina without damaging the retina underneath. Remember, the retina has the tensile strength of essentially wet toilet paper, and this epiretinal tissue is even more delicate. So I'm going to find an area which is suitable for me to kind of pick up an edge so that I can, I can remove it off the macular surface. And if I'm able to do that, the puckering effect or the wrinkling that it causes underneath will be relaxed and vision can be improved and distortion can be decreased. So in just a few seconds you'll see some of this darkly stained material being lifted off and I think you just saw some there near the optic nerve. Sometimes this comes off very easily in one piece and sometimes it comes off in lots of little pieces. We're just about at the end of the case. Remember, we've done the FOV or the vitrectomy to remove floaters. We then remove the epiretinal membrane after staining it with ICG dye. To end the case, just like 25 gauge, all we need to do is remove the trocars. We don't need stitches. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's one of my first using 27 gauge vitrectomy systems. I want to thank my incredible staff at Woodburn Surgical Center. I'm Randall Wong. I'm an ophthalmologist and retina specialist in Fairfax, Virginia. Please follow me at www.retinaeyedoctor.com and also www.vitrectomyforfloaters.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.